Sundays at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, Road to Reparations, right here on Emin the Mass Media Group. Shop at Amazon, go to our affiliate link, and support Emin the Mass Media Group.com. For your latest gear, go to etmediagroupstore.com. That's etmediagroupstore.com. Reparationsnowdoc.com out right now. Reparationsnowdoc.com. Also at Tubi. This is in the news. At least 18 people, including a pregnant woman, died in southern Nigeria when an illegal oil refinery exploded in the flames, a security official and resident said on Tuesday. The blaze, which broke out late on Sunday in Rivers State, occurred when a homemade refinery ignited a nearby oil reserve, leaking, leaving victims severely burned, a security official said. Residents fear the death toll could grow given the number of people believed to be on site at the time. 25 injured people were rescued. Olufime Oyodile, spokesman for the local Nigeria Security and Civil Corps, Civil Defense Corps said. The workers at the site were refining oil taken from a vandalized pipe, according to China, Chima Abadi, a local activist. When they scoop from the point where they vandalize the pipe, they will take to where they were cooking. That is how fire got there, Abadi said. Explosions at locally run refineries are common in oil-rich but impoverished Niger Delta region, where, where most of the nation's oil facilities are targeted by chronic oil theft. Gavin Newsom picks LaFonza Butler to fill Dianne Feinstein's Senate seat. Butler is the president of Emily's List, an organization devoted to electing Democratic women who support abortion rights. She previously served as a senior campaign advisor to Kamala Harris during her 2020 presidential campaign and has a long history as a labor leader. She will be sworn in Tuesday at the U.S. Capitol in Washington by Vice President Harris. Butler was the first woman of color to lead Emily's List when she joined the organization in 2021. She also previously served as Director of Public Policy at Airbnb. She will be a temporary U.S. Congress representative until upcoming elections in 2024. How can LaFonza Butler, who lives in Maryland, serve as California Senator? The woman who will replace the late Senator Dianne Feinstein would begin work at the Capitol as soon as Tuesday. California Governor Gavin Newsom appointed LaFonza Butler to serve as Senator until an election next year, and that raises a lot of questions about her ties to California since she lives in Silver Spring, Maryland. The question, does LaFonza Butler meet the qualifications to join the U.S. Senate? Yes. Even though she has spent more time recently on the Beltway than LA's 405 freeway, LaFonza Butler meets the threshold to join the U.S. Senate. There are only three requirements to be a U.S. Senator per Article 1 of the Constitution. 1. At least 30 years old. 2. A U.S. citizen for at least 9 years. and 3. An inhabitant of the state you will serve when elected. Next, the 17th Amendment explains that a state's governor can appoint someone to fill a Senate vacancy until an election is held. No additional requirements are mentioned. So is Butler an inhabitant of California? California Governor's Office spokesperson Izzy Garden said Butler owns a home in California. In the Associated Press report, she is expected to re-register to vote in California before being sworn in. Finally, Article 1, Section 5 of the Constitution says that the Senate shall be the judge of a senator's qualifications for office. There are currently 50 senators who caucus with Democrats and 49 Republicans. Butler would have the votes to survive any challenge. Kevin McCarthy ousted as U.S. House Speaker by hard-right Republicans. After leading a successful bipartisan effort to avoid 
a government shutdown over the weekend. Kevin McCarthy on Tuesday was abruptly removed from his role as U.S. House Speaker, ousted by hard right members of his own Republican Party less than a year after his election. The ousting of McCarthy represented the first time in U.S. history that a Speaker of the House has been removed from office, marking an ignominious end to a short and fraught tenure for the California Republican. It comes as Americans' approval ratings of Congress and the federal government remain near historic lows, with the majority saying they have little or no confidence in the future of the U.S. political system. The infighting between Republicans effectively puts a halt to all business in the House of Representatives and to the House, which has only a narrow Republican majority, elects a new speaker. McCarthy said Tuesday night that he would not run for speaker again, clearing the way for a new Republican speaker if the party members can reach a consensus. Republicans plan to hold a vote for a new speaker next Wednesday following a closed door meeting on October the 10th to discuss different candidates, Reuters reported. A youngish white man with a bright blue suit and slicked back brown hair holds both palms out and speaks as he is surrounded by a crush of people in a hallway holding cameras and phones. Who is Matt Getz, the congressman who led the ouster of Kevin McCarthy? The vote to oust McCarthy followed a motion to vacate the chair from the Florida Republican Congressman Matt Getz. After McCarthy's Republican allies failed to block the motion from moving forward, a final vote was held on Tuesday afternoon. Amid gasps from members in the tense chamber, eight hard right Republicans joined 208 Democrats in supporting McCarthy's removal as 210 Republicans tried and failed to keep the speaker in place. McCarthy needed a simple majority of voting members to keep his gavel, but failed to cross that threshold. The resolution is adopted. Congressman Steve Womack, the Arkansas Republican who presided over the session, announced after the vote, the Office of Speaker of the House of the United States States of Representatives is hereby declared vacant. Unfortunately, some unfortunate news. Baltimore police released video of persons of interest in Morgan State University shooting. The Baltimore Police Department has released surveillance video of persons of interest sought in connection with Tuesday's mass shootings at Morgan State University. Investigators are asking for the public's help in identifying the individual seen in the video. The gunfire that erupted outside on the campus of the historically black university in Maryland's most populous city during homecoming week on Tuesday night appears to have been the result of a dispute between two smaller groups and one individual was the target of two individuals who had weapons, according to Baltimore Police Commissioner Richard Worley. Five people, including four students, were shot, but none of them were the intended target, Worley said. The victims, four men and one woman between the ages of 18 and 22, all suffered non-life-threatening injuries and were treated at area hospitals, according to police. The shooting does not appear to have been racially motivated, according to Baltimore Mayor Brandon Scott. All classes at Morgan State University are canceled for the rest of the week while homecoming events are also canceled or postponed until a suspect is identified. According to the school's president, David Wilson, no arrests have been made, police said. Anyone with information to the case is urged to call Baltimore Police Department detectives at 410-396-2444 or to remain anonymous, the Metro Crime Stoppers tip line at 1-866-7-LOCKUP. That's 1-866-7-L-O-C-K-U-P. So it looks like the Trump uh, trial is still going on right now. Um, this is actually, report is from the third day, but I believe he didn't show up on the fourth day. So 
Anyway, we'll go with the third day. Uh, fast facts. Uh, Trump invoked his Fifth Amendment rights during the first deposition in August 2022. However, he answered questions during the second dep deposition in April 2023. Judge Arthur... Ingeron ruled last week that former President Trump and his company deceived banks, insurers, and others by massively over, overvaluing his assets and exaggerating his net worth on paperwork. Trump's legal spokeswoman, Elena Haba, said in a recent statement that the judge's ruling is, quote, fundamentally flawed at every level, end quote, and called the Trump organization, quote, an American success story, end quote. A New York appeals court narrowed state attorney general Letitia, Letitia James' civil lawsuit against the Trump family in June, dismissing Ivanka Trump as a defendant and deciding that the statute of limitations would prevent her from suing or alleged fraud. It looks like the Kaiser Permanente healthcare workers are on strike. More than 75,000 Kaiser Permanente healthcare workers began a three day strike Wednesday, a job action that could delay medical appointments, lab results, and prescriptions for thousands of patients, especially in California. Among the union staff members taking part in the walkout were support staff and other employees like x ray technicians, receptionists, medical assistants sanitation workers who disinfect rooms between patients and pharmacy workers who help dispense medications. These workers attend surgeries, run imaging equipment, and assist in hundreds of Kaiser's hospitals and outpatient clinics. Doctors and many nurses were not involved in the strike, but Kaiser officials warned that some non-urgent procedures like colonoscopies or mammograms might be postponed. Some clinic hours might be reduced and that waits on phone calls for assistance could some sites, mainly labs in places like Anaheim, San Diego and other parts of California were closed, according to Kaiser and others were operating with reduced hours. No major disruptions in healthcare services reported during the first hours of the strike and Kaiser officials reiterated the hospitals and emergency rooms as well as its hospital-based pharmacies would stay open. Kaiser patients in Colorado, California, Oregon, Virginia, and Washington State where Kaiser Health care workers are walking out could be affected. But an array of services such as lab tests, imaging, and the filing of prescriptions could be delayed because of the walkouts. Some clinics and pharmacies could be closed and Kaiser said it would contact patients with any cancellations. Kaiser's hospitals are open, but some people seeking care could be directed to a hospital outside of Kaiser's usual network if their doctors thought it was necessary. Kaiser's hospital-based pharmacies also remain open, though the health system is urging people to use its mail order pharmacy if they can't wait. Some patients may also be able to go to an outside retail pharmacy to fill a prescription. Well, it looks like it's hotter than usual during this time of year. Um, here's the two day forecast across the United States. Looks like up in Seattle, it's uh, 76 degrees. In Medford, it's uh, 90 degrees. I believe that's Medford, Oregon. Uh, Reno at 79 degrees in uh, Nevada. San Francisco, 86. Los Angeles, 95. Las Vegas, 94. Actually, that seems like it's kind of about right around this time anyway. I think it does get a little cooler um, around Las Vegas. But, you know, I guess for others, that's still hot during this time. Uh, Phoenix, 103. Obviously hot. Salt Lake City, 73. Um, up, 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 up north. Uh, it looks like you have uh, somewhere in Denver, uh, Colorado, at 57, uh, 79 in Albuquerque, El Paso at 87. Uh, let's go to Chicago at 61, Illinois, Minneapolis, Minnesota at 52 degrees. 
Uh, New Orleans at 84, Houston at 84, uh, Brownsville at 87, San Antonio at 86, Cincinnati at 73, Detroit at 67, um, Buffalo at 69 in New York, Washington, D.C. at 78. Shout out to our folk out in Washington, D.C. Uh, Norfolk, Virginia at 78. Uh, looks like, I believe that's uh, Charlotte at 81 degrees. Uh, Jacksonville, 86. Uh, Tampa at 90. And Miami at 88. And Atlanta at 79 degrees. Please like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time. This is In the News.